His name was Theodore Roosevelt Wilson, but he was most popularly known as Marion, Sweet Daddy Wiggins, the slick-talking, flamboyantly dressed loan shark from the comedy hit show, Good Times. When he would dress as the colorful character, he was the consummate professional, an actor's favorite actor, a perfectionist of the art. Trained in music and drama, he embodied every role he performed. His resume was legendary. One of the busiest TV and film actors in Hollywood. He portrayed gangsters and working men, outperforming on stage, the small screen, and the silver screen. His film debut, Cotton Comes to Harlem, showcased his talent his range, and his likability. On this episode of Hollywood Memoirs, we examine the life of the unforgettable Theodore Wilson. like these videos? Are they informative, entertaining? Are you learning something about some of your favorite artists? If so, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. It helps keep me in the rotation. And please press the notification bell to be informed of future postings. Now, back to the program. It was 1943, one of the deadliest riots in New York City, known as the Harlem Riots. 600 people were arrested, six were killed. The protest stemmed from when unarmed black man and army soldier Robert Bandy tried to intervene when white policeman James Collins was seen harassing a black woman named Margie Polite. Officer Collins wrestled Miss Polite to the ground until Mr. Bandy stepped in and grabbed the officer. Eventually, Officer Collins reached for his service weapon and shot Mr. Bandy. When news of the shooting circulated throughout Harlem, the residents took to the streets. The people were livid. Chaos lasted for two days. Order was eventually restored when a visit by a three-term elected and 99th mayor of New York, Fiorello LaGuardia, walked the streets of Harlem greeting the residents, making promises but delivering on none. One of the few silver linings for Harlemites at that time was the world-famous Apollo Theater. This was the backdrop to which Theodore Wilson was born. December 10, 1943. Although the Harlem Renaissance 
was at its decline, the spirit of entertainment was still in the air. Known as the Mecca for black performers, the biggest names in black Hollywood on any given day could be seen walking the streets. Cab Calloway, Sammy Davis Jr., and Sarah Vaughn would greet fans as though they were close friends. It's no wonder Teddy would choose entertainment as a career. After he graduated from high school, Teddy attended Florida A&M University to study music, then drama. Acting became his calling, and he pursued it with a passion. Upon returning to New York, Teddy joined the historic Negro Ensemble Company, founded by its multi-talented visionary and Tony Award nominee, Douglas Turner Ward, along with actor-activist Robert Hooks and G.S. Crone. The Negro Ensemble Company became the standard for black entertainers. This is where their skills were sharpened and their expressions appreciated. Afterwards, Teddy would join the Arena Stage Repertory, performing in plays all across the country. But it was the groundbreaking movie Cotton Comes to Harlem, where the world got to see his genius at work. The movie was adored by moviegoers and critics alike, and considered among the first of the black exploitation era. Very early on, Teddy cemented himself as an actor on the rise, capable of holding his own next to A-list stars. In the movie Cotton Comes to Harlem, he plays the role of Barry. Is that black enough for you? It ain't, but it's gonna be. <laughs> Teddy's performance was so well received, he appeared in the sequel, Comeback Charleston Blue, portraying the role of a cemetery guard. His next few movies were staples in the black exploitation genre. He was in Cleopatra Jones, starring the very beautiful model and actress Tamara Dotson, Black Eye with former football star turned actor Fred the Hammer Williamson, Newman's Law, The River Niger, Garney, The Hunter, Made to Order, and the Mel Brooks film Life Stinks. There were many other films that followed, but Teddy's remarkable talent and work ethic never secured him a starring role as a lead character in a feature film. He wanted to be seen more than just an actor in limited roles or typecast for only black roles. He wanted to transcend the expectations of race and class. Teddy's biggest success would come from appearances on network television. This was the arena he would really strive in. After packing his bags and moving to Hollywood, Teddy auditioned for the family drama TV show, The Waltons, appearing in two episodes. Other TV shows would follow. One episode on the musical sitcom, The Partridge Family, the short-lived military comedy rollout, and MASH. He was also a regular on the 1970s comedy, That's My Mama, which gave Teddy new exposure as a lead actor. The show starred Clifton Davis in the role of Clifton Curtis, the owner of Oscar's Barbershop, named after his deceased father. The mother on the show, Eloise, portrayed by the talented actress and stage veteran Teresa Merritt, also starring Ted Lang, most popularly known as Isaac from the hit TV show Love Boat. Actress Lynn Moody portrayed the role of Tracy Curtis, brother to Clifton, but was later replaced by Joan Pringle. Coincidentally, in 1980, in real life, Pringle and Teddy would become husband and wife, having two kids. But this would be Teddy's third child. He had an older son from a previous relationship. But the TV show Teddy is mostly known for from Television City in Hollywood. Good time, anytime you need a payment. Good time. Anytime. Was 
was a groundbreaking situation comedy that became a fan favorite among millions of viewers. The iconic half hour show, Good Times. Teddy performed the very smooth and charismatic character, Sweet Daddy Williams, nailing the road to a tee. No one could say they didn't think that Sweet Daddy Williams wasn't a real person. He didn't look like an actor portraying a loan shark, but actually a loan shark trying to act and doing a good job at it. Sweet Daddy was always accompanied by his two trusted bodyguards, Claude and Bruno. We should all know Claude, played by the late former pro football star Bubba Smith. Smith will go on and appear in many other TV shows and movies. Hightower, you take it easy now. Hightower, Hightower, don't do that, Hightower. If you don't stop, you are out of here. Mr. I am warning you, Hightower. Bruno was performed by late actor Larry Green, known for his role as Jimmy Rush in the 1974 black exploitation film Baby Needs a New Pair of Shoes. Teddy's next movie was Blood In, Blood Out, a story about gangs in the prison system. His character was named Wallace, an old man locked up for 30 years. The movie also starred other notable actors, Vin Rames, Delroy Lindo, Danny Trujo, Billy Bob Thornton, and many other stars. As expected, Teddy's performance commanded the scene. He was manipulative and cunning, brilliant from start to finish, capturing the essence of the character, just as he did with Sweet Daddy. I don't want to spoil it for those who have not seen the movie. It's definitely a must watch, streaming on YouTube. Problem is, no one knew that this would be Teddy's last and final film role. He died on July 21st, 1991 from stroke-related complications, two years before the movie hit the theaters in 1993. Teddy was just 43 years of age. Although Teddy's no longer here with us physically, he will always be remembered for the many characters he portrayed during the golden era of black situation comedies. He left an indelible mark firmly sketched in the minds and hearts of many of his adoring fans. Whether you remember him as Earl the Mailman. Mail call, mail call. Hey, I got a few goodies in here for you, man, somewhere. Uh, Earl, we got a goodies for you, too. You left us somebody else's mail yesterday. I did? Well, it won't happen anymore. Bye. Or Sweet Daddy Williams on Good Times. One thing we don't need is money from that parasite. Say is uh, J.J. Near, tell him that sweet daddy Williams is here. He'll be remembered as unforgettable.